If you like to make Dresden plate blocks, but you don't want to have to make a template for every single piece you're cutting out, you're going to want to watch today's video. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison, Hearst of Chatterbox Quilts. I'm a quilting teacher and I am the host of The Quilter's Way. It's an online club where quilters learn and grow in a fun and supportive community. Now, before we get into the Dresden plate block situation, I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. All right. I was looking at this book called Distinctive Dresdens. It's by that Patrick Place, which is a division of Martingale. And thanks so much for Martingale for sending me this copy to take a look at. And it's by Katja Marek. And I'm not doing a book review today, but I was going through this and there's all these different blocks you can make. And then in the back of the book, there are the templates that you need to make to cut out the fabric pieces to make the different blocks. Now, I thought it was kind of a waste. Usually you would, you know, if you needed six, let's say, A1 templates to make your block, that you would have to create or cut out or draw or photocopy six of the A1 patches. And that seemed like a real waste to me. I'm thinking there must be some way to make reusable templates. So I only have to make one and it will last for quite a few pieces that I need to cut out. So I put on my thinking cap and I came up with a way to do that. And what you need to do that is you need some freezer paper. You're going to need to photocopy the templates in the book that you want to use. And you need to have your rotary cutter, a mat, iron, fabric, a glue stick, and perhaps seam align glue. And I'm also using a product called Easy Press to do the pressing. You also need some regular scissors, ones you don't cut your fabric with. Okay, so what I did is I copied the uh, template. So I'm just going to show you one in this particular case. So this one from that book is called A3. So I photocopied it and I just cut it out, not right on the lines, outside the lines a little ways. And then I took my freezer paper and I cut a piece big enough so I knew that I could put on my template and it would be on, on the freezer paper. So we want to make sure that the freezer paper covers the entire back of this template. And then I folded the freezer paper in half, roughly, okay? What I want is two pieces of freezer paper that have the shiny side together because I'm going to iron them with my dry iron. And that's gonna make them stick together, okay? And what this gives me is a real sturdy template is what it's going to be once I put the little piece on it, okay? so. Next thing to do is to get that little template on the freezer paper. So I'm just using this glue stick just to put it on the back of my template here. And I'm just going to put that on the freezer paper. Let's cover up that glue stick. We don't want it to dry out. Okay, now if you want to, you could actually just give a quick iron to that just to set that glue down. Or you can just press it down. You don't really need to iron it, but it doesn't hurt. Okay, next thing to do is you want to cut out that template, right? And I'm going to cut it out just outside the lines, just ever so slightly. I don't want to cut inside the lines. Let me put it that way. And this is going to make your reusable template. All right. Maybe I can use some of that freezer paper for another template, but I now have my A3 template and it's pretty sturdy. Okay, it's gonna last for a while. What do I do next? Well, next I need to get the fabric done and cut out for that, okay? So, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to have a rotary cutter and a rotary cutter mat. So let me just get that and I'm gonna show you what we do next to actually get the fabric cut out from this particular template. So the next thing you want to do is you want to actually cut out some fabric using this template, right? And I want to be able to reuse this template. So let me show you what I do. I use a product from Acorn Precision Piecing Products called Seam Align Glue. Now this is a positional glue that allows you to position usually fabrics together to get good piecing results, but I had to try it on this. So what I do is I put some little dots just in the kind of corner areas and at the bottom here and actually I'm just going to step back for a second because I need to press it to set it. So let me just do that with my dry iron. And that's going to adhere that template 
to my fabric, okay? Let's hope so. <laughs> if not, I have to press it longer. And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna cut this out with a quarter inch seam. And let me tell you that when I'm making my Dresden plates, I usually am stitching them on my machine. I'm not stitching them by hand. And I'm gonna explain a little bit more about that, but regardless of how you do it, you wanna trim a quarter inch away from the edges of the template. Okay, so let me just open up. I've got my little cutter here. It's my 28 millimeter, so this works a little bit better here. So let me just get this lined up and cut. I'm gonna cut off there. And I can move this around a little bit. Actually, I'm on a rotating, I always forget, I'm on a rotating mat. <laughs> I'm a tally rotating mat here. You know, you get so used to not being able to rotate when you're cutting things that it's just too easy when you can. So let's go around again here. Almost done. I have to move my hanging ribbon out of the way here. There we go. I don't know how many times I've cut my hanging tabs from my rulers. Good thing I have lots of ribbon. Okay, and last little bit here at the bottom. All right. So, there's my little template, right? Okay. So what am I going to do next with it? Well, I can do some pressing. So let me switch things around again. This is the nice thing about this Martelli system is I can cut on it and I can also press if I need to, which is what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I've got my little template here. Remember, I am using my sewing machine to put these together. So for me, what I do is I will take just the top edges and fold them in. I'm just gonna give us a little bit of a press here right now. But what I like to do, and you can see how it pops up, okay? You haven't got much fabric there. It's being a bit difficult, it doesn't wanna stay. And this is when I like to use the Easy Press solution. So let me just go get my Easy Press pen and I'll show you how that works. So the Easy Press, you can use it in a spray bottle when I'm spraying fabric. Before I start cutting it, I will spray it to press it all down, make it nice and flat. But it also comes in this pen, and this is perfect for this situation. So what I'll do is I will fold it down, just give a little dab there to get it flowing, and I'll put it on, and it'll start going down already a little bit. Okay, and I'll let it soak in for eh, about 10 to 15 seconds. Needs to get in there a little bit. And then we're gonna press it down with my dry iron and leave it there for maybe about five, six seconds. And look at how flat that is. It's perfect, right? And I'm gonna do that on the other side as well. I'm gonna press it down and just get in there just to get it. Doesn't, doesn't wanna cooperate at all, does it, without the easy press on it. So you can see how helpful this product actually is in this situation, because I want those points Nice there. I didn't wait long enough. My iron was hissing at me. I don't want to hold you up any longer than I have to here just for watching me press, right? Okay, so that's all, all I will need to do on this particular piece because I'm going to be using my sewing machine and I'm going to be using a quarter inch foot so, you know, I don't need to press it in. If you were hand stitching these together though, I would definitely press them all in because then you'll have that press line as your guide for where you should be sewing them together. Okay, so you say, okay, that's great, that's fine. What happens next? And why did you put this on the freezer paper? And what are you doing? Okay, so you want to remove these, right? And the, the seam line, I should say, glue lets you remove them fairly easily without damaging the fabric. So I can just take it up, pull it out. That easy press has kept those down really nicely. I can move on and do a whole bunch more of these, okay? So it allows me to take it out easily and without damaging the template and make a whole bunch more of them if I need to, all right? So you can see what it looks like here. Okay, it looks very nice, doesn't it? And then you can start adding them together. So let me show you, I've got some here that I made. And I'm just gonna move this off again so you can see this probably a little bit better for you. Apparently we have, oh, this is my hand. I did one with hand sewing. It's not very good, but you know. So I tried it with the hand sewing where I had actually pressed the seams all down. You can see the blue one is all pressed down and everything. So I kind of whip stitched them together. And then I did a second one on the machine. So I actually had started pressing this down. Then I realized I didn't need to. So why would you do something if you don't need to? 
Okay, and so there they are, and you can see they are how nicely they fit together and everything. This little guy is, there he goes. He's got to go get tucked under there. He's misbehaving. So they're ready to be put into your quilt project. And again, if I was doing these um, on the machine or even by hand, really, if you're going to have another piece, like usually have a circular piece that covers those raw edges in the middle, there's no need to fold these under and press those under. Now, if they were going to just be you know, with an open area in the center, yes, you want to press these under and make sure that you have, you know, you don't have the raw edge of the fabric sticking out there, so you'll press them under and do that. So I found by doing this, I could use these templates, you know, maybe I could use them certainly for the whole block, maybe for the whole project, and then I've only had to copy one and make one template, and the other thing is, is when I'm done with this project, I could bag these up, put them in a little Ziploc bag, mark on the front what block it was, say from this particular book, and then I've got them to use again for another project. So I found it worked really well for me, and so if you like to make Dresden plates, or even if you're using this for other types of projects and you need to make a template, using the freezer paper, two sides together, and then putting your template on top works super well. The seam aligned glue works really well too because it allows you to put that template on the fabric to cut around it and depress it and everything, and then it peels off really easily. So that's another helpful product in this situation. So I hope you liked this video and found it helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your quilting friends. And if you want more helpful quilting information, please go to chatterboxquilts.com.